go with an Oscar. Oh, well, this was better than the first one. How so? Don't, don't think so? Yeah, yeah, I think the goals were were fun in this one. The games were entertaining, but and you sort of got to see teams come more in, into their own, and there were a bunch of tactical games that we saw this weekend. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and there's lots of action besides goals. Yeah. So let's start at the top of the table with Villarreal versus Atletico Madrid because that was an interesting game. That was the more tactical game, shall I say. Yeah. I have to say, though, I saw quite a few people saying that the game was horrible. I'm like, are we watching the same as like this is tactic? This is like a very, if you're, if this is like a really good game when you look at it, like how the managers are trying to outsmart each other. And yeah, I, I, it was quite enjoyable seeing Villarreal transition well and Atleti put pressure in the second half and also try and, you know, play mind games with Villarreal and in, in a way like, because Villarreal are trying to invite Atleti to press, right? And Atleti didn't want to press, so it was like, okay, who's going to budge? Yeah, yeah, this was a game that, by the way, Villarreal won 2-0, but I can understand why people called it a bit the term boring, because that was a term that Yannick Carrasco used in his post-match interview, where he said that, like like you said, Villarreal, they invited Atleti to press. Atleti didn't want to press, so it was sort Mm -hmm. of like a game of chicken, like who's going to buck first, which is interesting from a tactical point of view, but I guess from the pure standpoint, maybe you want more uh, end-to-end stuff that we that we did see closer to the end of the game. Yeah, but, but in the first half, I thought Villarreal were by far and away the better team because yeah, exa- they exactly. a better I feel like, They should yeah. have had the ball in the net. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people complain about the first half were complaining from Atleti's point of view because Atleti were not good in the first half. Villarreal were yeah. very good, and as you said, all black and a bit of bad luck was all preventing them from scoring in the first half. But do you, what do you think of Diego Simeone's tactics then? Like, did he make the wrong mistake? Because I feel as the home team, Atleti are meant to be more progressive. They're meant to take the initiative, press higher, like mm-hmm. force Villarreal. Because I've seen people complain that, oh, Villarreal wasted time. But I, I don't think they wasted time in terms of ball out of play. They wasted time in the game. And that was yeah. mostly because Atleti didn't want to dance the mm-hmm. way they wanted to dance. Yeah. I mean, first of all, Villarreal only used the same tactics they used against every other big giants that they toppled over this year. So if you didn't complain, then why are you complaining now? It's the same thing. Second of all, yeah, I agree Simeone kind of messed up with his tactics in the first half because I compared this game to the exact fixture last year, which was early in the season. The difference is that Atleti pressed Villarreal so much in that game that Villarreal were constantly under the crush last year. At least in the first half, they did that. This year, it was the exact opposite. They just they were so languid. And it's like when they pressed, it was like a disjointed press where only Morata and Felix went forward. The midfield just kind of stayed a bit and the defense just hung back. So there was every Villarreal player that found the ball in between the lines had so much time to think about what they wanted to do. So that's where Simeone got it wrong. The team didn't commit to any single idea completely. Yeah, let's let's take let's take everyone through the goals. Let's run down the goals. The first one was a big mistake by Noah Molina. What was mm-hmm. he thinking? He tries to clear the ball, but he swaps his lines and Pino comes in and scores. Yeah, it's it's kind of like yeah, like I think yeah, like you said, he was just trying to his lines instead of maybe having a bit of composure that would have been required. But that's fair and all, fair enough if you want to clear and nice. Just make sure you do it because if you don't do it and it gets hacked like that into a part of Pino, then that's what you get. And Koke, I don't really blame Koke in that situation because I'm sure he, the last thing he was expecting was Molina to not clear the ball. So, yeah, yeah. bad mistake when the game was actually pretty evil. Yeah, that, that was that was a big error. And it, it takes me back to last season when Villarreal made a similar error. <laughs> uh, no, nah, the, 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 the error Villarreal made was worse. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but 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 Molina, he possibly had the worst home debut ever. He, he gives away that first goal and then he gets goes sent and up. gets himself sent off. And, and that was that was a stupid challenge to make. Yeah, it was like he was just like a fish going towards the worm and Ben I was just beating him, beating him until he just acted out. I'm like, you can't do that and not expect to get punished, my man. Yeah, because I, I would understand if he, let's say he pushes and shoves him, and the ref might maybe give a yellow card, but like yeah. that was a punch. And that yeah, was and like, like anything on the anything be above the neck, you're walking to the dressing room. So at least be smart about it. Like just other people are smart about it. Like push him in the body or something. When you do it in the face, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, Gerard Moreno went on to score the final goal in a brilliant counterattack. But besides the goal, and we're going to talk about Gerard soon, but there was controversy in the celebration, which I feel <laughs> athletic fans were a bit disgraceful to use that term because he does that in every single game. He celebrates that way every single game. I and know, then you right? see the fans throw bottles, the players cause a fuss. And I feel that's somewhat Atleti's DNA in a way. And I know Atleti fans would get annoyed with me, but whenever things don't go their way, they always resort to show their frustration outwardly and take it on other players and be very petulant. And that's why the, the yellows and reds come up. Yeah. And it happened today where like it didn't go their way. It was a frustrating game. And there was no there was no real reason to, for either the players or the fans to attack Gerard Moreno in that At way. all. Like, yeah. I feel like Atleti is a club that emotion is a big part of their DNA. So it works for them and sometimes it results in things like this. And it's not just something that's exclusive to Atleti fans. Any fan base can do that. It's just, yeah. you know, with, since Atleti are such a high-profile club, we'll notice it more and yeah, about the celebration, he does this in every bloody game. The only yeah. time he has not done it was against my United in the Europa League final where he did that vaccine, uh, the like injection celebration, which I love. But yeah, yeah it's like that. And I, I don't know why they booked him for that. So Villarreal yeah. should get that yellow card removed because that's stupid by the referee to book him. Yeah, yeah. And, and you made a point like on that emotional thing. I feel that's something that affects us actually more than other teams in that their players get overly emotional. Yeah. Their fans you, get overly emotional. And even that's why they get so many yellow stuff, cards. Yeah. Even that stuff about before the match, I haven't really looked into it too much, but I heard that Hermoso got into a bit of a friendly argument with the fans. <laughs> Let's call it that. <laughs> yeah, friendly argument. And, and the fans, there was talking about Griezmann calling him a traitor. And Griezmann's situation is actually quite interesting too because he has to play a certain amount of games for FFC's purchase mm -hmm. option to become mandatory. Yeah. They are trying to play chicken with Barcelona. And, oh, so I, and I saw that 30 too. minutes every, every, mostly every single game. But this, might hurt them in the future because like if he he seems like he's on the road to have a very good season but like if you're playing him less than 30 minutes every game it's going to affect his development it's going to affect the team going forward and what happens mm -hmm. when you lose Correa, Cunha, Morata, Joao Felix yeah that, that's what I'm waiting for to happen I'm like if that's how you guys want to do it let's see if you guys are going to call Camelo and kill me back instead of playing Griezmann <laughs> but to be fair, Barcelona has done that to be to be honest. I, I remember with Demir last season. Uh, yeah, they, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we did that. So I, like I, I our case is like Javi didn't rate the guy, so he's like, let's just save money. Like we're broke <laughs> or we're cash trapped, whatever. Let's just save money. So yeah, it's it's a tactic that one can call childish, but it works. So <laughs> It, it does work. And, and Hopefully it doesn't work for them. <laughs> and for Villarreal, this just reinforces what we feel about them, that they are the team that I believe are favorites to finish in the top four. And yeah. Gerard Moreno, like, when they have him, he's such a wonderful player. Mm -hmm. It's just about keeping him fit. And if he's fit, both his club and his country are going to enjoy from it. So hopefully that's the case for them. Yeah, Real Madrid are just behind them, and 
they went to Vigo and it seemed like they were going to struggle there in the first half, but they certainly did struggle a bit. But mm-hmm. Martyrch, my yeah. God, what can we say about him? Yeah. Nothing else that hasn't been said already. So, yeah, like the goal yeah. he scores to bring that, to like get Real Madrid back on top, and then the assist for Vinicius. So, yeah, like, both beautiful. Yeah, that's that's just my dream. That's uh, you are so good that the Celta fans had to applaud you. Like, yeah. what can you do against someone that good? Just, yeah. don't, just lap it up and enjoy it. Yeah, I feel I feel a bit for Celta because the form result. Yeah, it's I very hard. That is Real Madrid, but I would say they they played really well in the first half. They were mm-hmm. very competitive with Real Madrid. I, at mm-hmm. times, I felt they dominated that Real Madrid midfield. That was like. A bit newer since Casemiro left to Manchester United, mm-hmm. but in the second half, Real Madrid they were just brilliant. They just took the game to another level. Tremini yeah. was brilliant. Camavinga was brilliant. We already mentioned Modric. Yeah. All in all, it was a world class performance for Real Madrid, and it doesn't seem like they will miss Casemiro. Or is this just too early to tell? Yeah, it's probably too early to tell. One thing you have to put into consideration is that whether Real Madrid play well or not, they're Offensive transitions are something else. Like the way these guys go from defense to attack and just kill you. It's just you, you can't be mad at that as a football fan. So yeah, that's as long as they have that, they don't need to like worry about dominating anyone because Celta did dominate, like you said, and at this point, and doesn't flatter Madrid at all, but it's certainly very, very harsh on Celta who we're so close to them at the point, and then, you know, boom, it's over. Yeah, it, it's a psychology in scoring goals, right? Because I feel, and we'll get to this with Barcelona when we talk about them, but I feel Real Madrid they score the goals at the right time. Yeah. When it's teams, and you'll see that in the Real Sociedad Barca game. Maybe we'll talk about this after. But like, as Celta were dominating, as they were getting close to the goal, that's when Real Madrid scored in three yeah. of the four goals. Mm-hmm. Or in fact, I think all of them, because all of them, most of them come from a counter attack, mm-hmm. and it, it, I think just the second one was the moment of brilliance. But like the other three, you saw felt were about to score, and then Rome just scores, and that yeah. makes so much of a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. The third goal, though, the one Vinicius scored. Like I don't know what Mayo was thinking. Like he was with him, and then he just said, "Let me leave him," and then. I, I don't know if uh, Marquezin slipped or not, but they didn't, certainly didn't cover themselves in glory for that one. No, no. I, I feel maybe you thought Marquezin was going to get there first, but given the fact that Vinicius is so fast, it's so quick. Yeah, exactly. I was, like, not, yeah, I was like, no, I thought what happens is going to get there. And then so. <laughs> yeah. I feel maybe the problem was Vinicius and Mayu. Mayu didn't have, a, like, he wasn't, didn't have a bit of, like, Starting a starting ground against yeah. Vinicius and Vinicius is pretty quick, so yeah. he was always going to win that. I, I feel regardless of what Maya did, Vinicius was always going to win that race. True, true, true. Always going to score. Yeah, yeah but and also fun. another thing about Vinicius, yeah. like I like how before he put the ball in the net, he looked up and said, "Okay, the goal." Is, he confirmed the goal was empty before doing it. It's such yeah. a small detail, but it just shows the guy's grit. Like he thinks clearly before he executes now and that's what's made him world class yeah definitely that's definitely made him world class and he if Real Madrid are to win the title again like he would definitely be part of it would be one of the reasons why Real Madrid would go on to win it Mm -hmm. yeah let's talk about Barcelona because we already mentioned them and we promised our viewers we're going to talk about them next so wow this game I feel it was kind of like Similar to the Real Sociedad Real Madrid game, and I alluded to that in that. Yeah, it's like so in the they, first half, Real Sociedad they deserve to go into halftime up a goal or more because they were dominating Barcelona. Barcelona did get the early lead thanks to Lewandowski, but in the second half, Barcelona took it to another level. Yeah, I have to say the scoreline. Like, I'm happy about the scoreline. I'm happy about the win, but that first half, I was boiling with mm-hmm. how. I'm like, okay, first of all, Xavi decides to play his 3-3-4 formation. I'm like, okay, that's fine and good, but then the players don't seem to be playing it because Balde, who's a left-back by trade, 
was playing as a left winger and Araujo was too central. Merino, who is not a left winger, was having too much space on that right hand side and they almost scored from it, like you said. So yeah, it's like the players did not know which system they were playing in the first half with no defensive midfielder on the pitch. Uh, midfield was like a sieve that they were just passing through. The only person that was trying to count things down was Pedri, but in the second half, when we decided to commit to either formation, whether it was 3-3-4 or 4-3-3, I thought it looked very excellent. Yeah, and I feel Ross that what it made the mistake was they didn't take advantage of the opportunities, numerous yeah. opportunities they had in the first half. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I remember the silver one that produced a very good save out of Stegen. They had Marino the with... follow up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that, yeah the Kubo right. follow up, you should definitely should have done better. And I thank God he didn't do better. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been here right now. I'd have been somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when I, I think the key to this game was that sub, those substitutions made by Xavi because yeah. the fact he, Took Barcelona to another level. Yeah. Like during the game, right? When Ferran was playing, Ferran was trying to do those combinations with Landowski, but they weren't coming off. I know this was Ferran's first game back, so he wasn't obviously as fit, but Fatty came and just did them a lot better with everybody. Like just showed how good of a footballer he is and just reminded everyone that this kid is pretty special. Yeah, he is. And I feel like he can reach unbeatable heights if he can stay fit. Yeah. His problem is because like he's good, he's a good dribbler. He has great vision. He's quite quick. Mm-hmm. He's a good finisher. He has everything to be a world class player as a mm-hmm. party, But the problem is the consistent injuries that yeah. really stifle them. Yeah, that's why. As much as I love this cameo, he should still be on the bench until he's really gotten his level back. Like. We have a lot of options now, so it's best to just keep managing and managing. Man, he's the kind of player that does not need too many opportunities to score anyway. So, if you bring him on in the last thirty minutes or so, he can definitely make a difference. Yeah, and maybe the strength and depth is very good for him because there's less pressure on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. All the pressure is on Robert Lewandowski, who scored a brace on his birthday, and. He definitely shut up all the haters who were speaking rubbish about him after match day one. He had haters. I didn't realize yeah, he yeah, that. Yeah. He had some. Yeah. Kind of impatient, you know? Yeah. But, anyway. but it, it is modern football. A striker yeah. doesn't score, yeah. and all of a sudden, all his rubbish and, and stuff. Yeah, people will be like, oh, he left Bayern, and Bayern has scoring goals for fun. He was holding them back, that kind of nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But the key controversy in this game, though, was Usman Dembele, because he scores the second goal. Mm-hmm. But should he have been on the pitch? Yeah. I've seen, and I don't know, that, I don't think that's worthy of being sent off. Maybe I'm a bit biased, but yeah. I've seen worse that has not, that has just been given a talking to, so I don't even know. <laughs> no, I, in my what opinion, do you think? I should have read. I think that should be right because of the way, like he knows Ian is there. He raises his arm in a way designed to hit him. So I think, at the very least, that's all in combat kind of red. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'm biased. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, but yeah. thing is that my natural reaction was that I wasn't too worried that he might get sent off. I was like, at most yellow, because. So it just depends on who the referee is, and the referee is one of the ones that doesn't like give cards based on players' reactions. Because there's some people that see iron on the floor and they give a red and they kick them belly out with their own feet. Yeah, we'll, talk <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll talk that. about that person later. <laughs> yeah. But but if you're rough with that, then though, this must be so frustrating because you see a guy who's meant to be sent off, he scores the goal that basically takes the. Yeah, That's basically game, not stuffing out of them. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's frustrating, but I think the important thing for Aguasila and his guys was that they played really, really well up until the second goal. And like all the changes he made and everything just confused them. But 
They can take a lot of credit for our performance. Also, yeah. Isak scored, so that's something to be encouraged about. <laughs> yeah, I, and I also feel I feel substitutions were terrible, to be honest. If I'm speaking honestly and frankly, because those substitutions were a signal that I've given up on this game, and those were when it was that was when it was still three one. Yeah, and I don't like his mentality as a manager because I feel as a manager, like yes, he does get real back to Europe every season. But I feel if they are to go to the next level, I'm not sure whether he's the right man for this job because he could have easily brought on Cho, left Kubo and Isak on, and mm -hmm. I feel they could have still scored some goals because they were still in the game at that point. They had two sucker punches, but they could still go on. Well, what he did essentially did is like, I give up Barcelona yeah. one. And why? Though, there's, no, there's no middle fixture coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not like Kubo and Isak were playing bad. Like, you had to just take them off. Like, they were doing okay. So, yeah, yeah. that was kind of weird to me. But, hey, I was my team was winning. I was like, please bring <laughs> bring on more kids. Yeah. Yeah. The other high-profile game on Sunday was Athletic versus Valencia. And this was, it was a pretty interesting game. Yeah, and it was interesting to see two teams that did everything right up to up until the final third, but they were so <laughs> nervous at the end. Yeah, but I really like the approaches that Katusa and Valverde are giving their teams. Like the days of four four two are gone. It's four two two in possession now. Yeah, yeah, and and it made it it made it an interesting game because both mm -hmm. teams they were proposing something, but the problem is like the, both minds are not existent. Yeah, I feel like the problem with Valencia was a lack of quality on the fin in the final third because Castillo's transfer, for instance, we'd expect him to hit the target at least. Marcos Andre, the guy turned went from Andre to Messi back to Andre in five seconds. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it, it's, it could have been easily 1-1. One, one. But yeah, credit to both teams. It was a pretty fascinating game. To watch. Do you think Edison Cavani will be the answer for Valencia? Because like he's in Spain, no one knows who he's signing for. <laughs> Instead of the case like Umar Sadiq, who they sold two weeks ago, and no one knows where he's going. No one knows yeah. where Cavani is going between mm. Villarreal and Valencia. But it is between one of those teams. Yeah, who do you so... think fits in better? If I'm being honest. I'd say Valencia kind of fits in better because Villarreal's kind, the way their forwards play, their forwards are meant to be like pretty mobile. Cavani isn't that mobile. And I feel like if Valencia have a very good focal point, Duro is good enough to play on the wing, like with that outside in kind of player. So I feel it fits Valencia more. It's just, it's easier to see him going to Villarreal because Valencia have financial constraints more than Villarreal do. Yeah, and, and from a sporting project, if we're being honest, like Villarreal is more attractive. Yeah. They're a team yeah. that they could win the conference league. They could finish in top four. They could do things in the Copa del Rey. Mm -hmm. But I feel Valencia needed more. Like there's more of a need. Yeah, Valencia needed more for sure. Because Andre, <laughs> no one knows, no one knows, no one can, can trust him. Maxi Gomez, Actually, Gomez his cousin, and Andrea. His cousin and his brother must be playing because, like, he's not the same guy who can I ship us on Delta. <laughs> his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I agree with you. The guy, he's not the same guy that was scoring 22 goals for Celta in the season. Yeah. But you know what? I, I, I still, I'm still positive about Valencia's season and I'm positive about Athletic season because I feel they have a chance. Mm -hmm. Maybe even to get to four, given how Sadia have been floundering around to start the season. Uh, where did I predict Atletico would finish? Was it fifth or sixth? I know I have them above Sevilla. Probably oh. sixth, but no, no, because I mean we'll talk about Sevilla soon. But and but yeah, given the fact that it's Valverde and this guy has taken them as high as fourth and fifth before. I feel it's possible he can do it again. 
especially as Athletic will have less games to play than Betis and Villarreal, for instance. They have that advantage. Yeah, let's talk about Sevilla because uh, yeah, yeah. they they were frustrating, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, if they don't cross it into the box, there's no other way to score, apparently. Yeah, but the crosses are so bad. Like, yeah, they could, by the they, lead, I, mm-hmm. I expected them to really dominate this game, to really get the first win, and to, to make a stamp on on the game. But yeah. And the first half seemed like they were doing it, but in the second half, they just, like... They, yeah, the second was half was... Yeah, the second half, they were just... Average. The first half, they were trying, but again, they weren't... They didn't really create anything to force Asen, who flying left and right to make saves. A lot of their headers from average positions, decent positions are just going over the bar. And he had the delivery from Acuna's deliveries were good. Montiel's deliveries were just trash. Yeah. Uh, and then River the did score and great to Sevilla, they get the equalizer, but it just feels like wasted a wasted opportunity to get back on track, especially at home. Yeah, yeah, and especially when you look at the games that are coming up because Barcelona is in two weeks, Atleti is soon, Villarreal is soon, Athletic Club is soon. I haven't think they might play Real Sociedad soon, so it makes me wonder whether Julian Lopetegui will still be in the job, given the fact that I don't really fancy them to have a good Champions League campaign. Mm, that's understandable. Uh, and so with all these tough games coming up, like these, the first two games or the first three games seem like easy bankers for nine points. But now they've got some one out of six. Niantu had a great debut, in my opinion. He did really well. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I was impressed with him. Back too. in the ball. Mm-hmm. But they have to improve like really quickly unless this, this could be the season. This season could unravel. They could finish like, uh, like they could have a season when they finish seventh. <laughs> Yeah, like that bats with, with the amount of tough games they have coming up, I'd be shocked if Julian Lopetegui is still there before the World Cup. Yeah. But, yeah. If, if he was to go, who do you think should replace him? Um, uh, I mean, Poch is free. He's a pretty... He's like the same level as Julian, maybe a bit lower, but... He plays ambitious. He, he'll definitely bring a change to us if we play football, which is, quite frankly, what everybody who has eyes needs right now. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, under Julian Lopetegui, it's definitely gone still. Like, I really like him, but I think you can see the writing on the wall. Like, he's possibly not super happy with the squad. Yeah. The fans don't really like him at the moment, so... Yeah, the... I, if, I don't know if you remember, but even before the Europa League win, the fans were kind of on his back before lockdown. Yeah. Yeah, the they Europa were. League win, like, really changed everything, like, you know, and the, also the fans not coming to the games every time. But, yeah, right now it's not looking good. Like, the fact that Sevilla fans booed them in a friendly against Cardiff just says everything about the mood there right now and you know, they have to get some big wins over the next few weeks. Yeah. If they if they win, like, the game against Barca, the ones against the uh, uh, Atletico and Atletico Club, it could make a world of difference. But yeah, they should forget that they winning against us, dude. <laughs> it can't happen. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I, but, I just can't see them winning any of those games. Yeah, but it's real valuable, though. A good way yeah. to get your first point in a very tough run. Very, yeah, and they, they, have, they have to go to the camp me next. Uh, actually, I'm nervous about that one because Javi's away record with us is almost perfect. Our home form is less so, and it's usually against these kind of teams. So I'm not too thrilled about that one, <laughs> no, especially no. seeing them frustrate Sevilla. But, but we I, should, I we should really win that game. Chances. I, I can see them giving away chances, though, because Sevilla did have a lot of good opportunities like good openings but the way they yeah. play they're so slow they take yeah. the time so yeah if we if we played the way we played slow against Ryu we can forget the outscoring but if we play a good tempo then we should win barring a disaster yeah so so let's let's talk about the city rivals that is and 
they're they're one club that they love their manager. The team's going through some issues, but they're grinding out results. They won against Mallorca in controversial style, shall mm-hmm. we say? Yeah. Uh, the referee, our, our good friend Gonzalo Fuertes, was giving out penalties like candy in this game. Yellow card like candy. Sixteenth <laughs> was it sixteenth? Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't even a violent game, so I wonder <laughs> what he was thinking. Honestly, I don't. Okay, I, I, I'm opening this thing. I'm opening Sofascore right now. I'm going to see the reason for all of the yellow cards. Okay, first one, first minute, William Carvalho, foul, foul, foul. Some arguments. A lot of well, a lot of players are getting yellow cards for arguments. <laughs> it's like these referees can't t- take a joke. <laughs> No, no. I, I feel him and we'll get to Figueroa or Vasquez. Like, they're the worst <laughs> referees in, in La Liga by, by far. By far. Uh, he's... <laughs> Do you think Gonzalez Fuertes got those penalties fought on? Because I feel the second one, I don't think that was a penalty. The first one, yes. The second one. The, because from one angle, it looks like and Bataglia does move in a little bit, but I personally wouldn't have given it to me. That's a penalty too. And by the law, the supposed law this season, you shouldn't give those. So, yeah. or you shouldn't I... like waste time checking those. I, I don't even know what the rule is anymore. I found out about this midway three severe match in match day one. So <laughs> who knows anymore? But on Betis, it's, it's really awesome for them, given the fact that they haven't been able to register six players. The only player mm-hmm. that they registered was suspended for this game, given yeah. what happened in Italy. Mm-hmm. And still, they find themselves with two wins from two games, five goals scored, one conceded. Do you think, between them or the area, who do you think will finish in top four at the moment? I'll say a fully fit Villarreal are better than Betis, so... I'd say them. them. Yeah, but do you think Betis can in any way yeah, of course. what they did last season? They can, they can for sure. Cup? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the fact that one me and Borja have started this season the same vein as last year is enough reason for me to believe that with Canales and Fekir, that front four should be able to win a lot of games for Betis this season. Yeah. Yeah. On the theme of penalties, let's move on to Osasuna. And they got two penalties <laughs> in the win against Cadiz. I'm a bit worried for Cadiz. They're the only team so far that hasn't scored. The fans seem to be on the back of the president because of the lack of transfer activity. Yeah. The only two signings have been to get two French players from Real Madrid in Blanco and choose two, I believe, are, can be very good. Other trees considered the penalty, and then our Mabel, an Australian winger. So it's not, they've not really like strengthened a lot in comparison to the teams around them. And, and okay, I'll say it like this Mayaka haven't made a lot of signings, but the signing they made is very important in Mariki, and he scored. Yeah. Yeah. And he, the, that has improved the team in and of itself. None of the signings that Cadiz have made are necessarily improving the team. So I do worry for them. And if Ladesma can't produce miracles, then they'll be in trouble. But let me be honest with you. Cadiz will win a game soon. You know that we both know what that game is going to be. So let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moving on and on the theme of like overperforming teams or underperforming teams, Espanol, they... <laughs> Played against Rayo Vallecano and Rayo, they have a good record when it comes to going to Barcelona or going That's to Catalonia long, in general. Because remember, yeah, remember they beat Girona to get the first division in the first place. So, yeah, it's like that's their that's their home away from home or region away from region. Yeah, this is goal though. Zero goals conceded in six <laughs> games against Barcelona teams. Yeah, it's it's mad. Well. They are going to be ready for what we'll do to them in the Lakers. <laughs> Just watch. <laughs> yeah. Another yeah. Zero, 0 Yeah, the free kick for the first goal was brilliant. Yeah, that was... It was a brilliant move and everything. <laughs> yeah. You see, 
EC in particular loves taunting Espanol. <laughs> I you sent me something where the fans said that the Mr. said Espanol fans are afraid of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and and EC is he's a very underrated player because I, I call him the budget Raquel May. <laughs> Uh, I, I call him budget I am Robin, but because <laughs> yeah. he's bald too. <laughs> I left it there. Yeah. But yeah, he's a pretty, he was a very, very good goal. And Cease also scored again. Cease's agenda is, take, is gaining more footsteps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's had a brilliant couple of games, man. People yeah. in Boston must hate him. Yeah, so prefer- it's a pretty good win for Rayo and four points. Which can go a very long way in securing top flight. Yeah. But for Espanol, though, man, I'm slightly disappointed with Diego Martinez. Like things haven't really started well for them. Yeah. This game, uh, the referee really messed up in this game, I feel. He lost control of the game. That's our different figure of Vasquez. The, this was Figaro Vasquez, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the two red cards, I was like, it's not that deep, man. <laughs> well, the team with Espanol is that I saw a tweet where host, someone said Hossel is frustrated that Espanol, he comes to Espanol and they're playing like Alaves. <laughs> I'm like, but wait, Hossel who played for Alaves and he's playing for Espanol now and they're both playing that way. What's the common factor? Yeah, it, it is awkward, <laughs> but I feel they, they are missing around this Yeah. Depend if he leaves, who knows whether he's going to leave Espanol at the end of the window. But if he stays, I do think they're a better team. Yeah, they're a much better team with him. And I do believe that he and Jose can coexist together. It's just yeah. that the reason he's not playing right now, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know, you guys better make up otherwise you might find yourself behind in the table at yeah, some yeah, point and, ne- and next up for them is real madrid so i'm gonna get any easier that's my office as real madrid next up yeah at the corner um, or rcd <laughs> um, is it possible for both teams to lose <laughs> no well there's something called a draw <laughs> fair enough <laughs> It's something called a draw. Yeah, let, let's move on to Almeria versus, or Elche versus Al- Almeria. And this was an interesting game, I, I found, because both sides really played well. They both they, they both look inspired. I, I think I would like it if, if both teams stay up, because both teams are teams that I would want to watch. Yeah, yeah, Elche, yeah both teams are really, really good in this game. And... I agree with you. If Almeria's approach is really brave, and I'd like it if they stay up using said brave approach because it will send a positive message to other teams in the league, like, hey, maybe we can try something like this. I thought um, Kaiki again was really good, the young defensive sensation. We'll see what the season holds for him. And yeah, both goalkeepers really played their part in preventing goals in this game. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a tough game. And the other Monday night game was Girona versus Tantafe. And wow. Yeah. This brought fireworks. Yeah, this was a really good game. Yeah. My Getafe for top half agenda took a massive blitz today. <laughs> but we move. Uh, yeah, but yeah. They, they don't start well at Tafe, do they? Last season, yeah, they, they don't start well. Seven games. <laughs> they, they went seven. They went seven games without scoring a goal at least they've gotten a goal in match day two yeah. to say that that's an improvement it's like girona man they, they look they look very like out of the promoted teams they look costly the best yeah which is kind of ironic as they barely got into um the sec the premier through the players but i guess that's the formula isn't it like the team that usually finishes sixth usually ends up having the best season out of all of the other promoted teams. So yeah, yeah, yeah like take a look at Rayo from last mm-hmm. season. They finished sixth and they came into the Primera like a Phoenix and they were just winning left, right, and mm-hmm. center. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's important for Girona and to get like Stoani scored. That's good for them. Castellanos got yeah. his first goal. And overall, Mitchell's team, even against Valencia, I thought they were 
quite good in that game. So hopefully we see more excitement from them. Yeah, hopefully. So and how one more thing, uh, I have to seriously yeah. brush my teeth after speaking good about Jiren. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, that, I just had to throw that joke in there. <laughs> yeah. How oh, how was the Manchester United game? How's the Manchester United? Uh, I was looking at both at the same time. I was uh, I mean <laughs> I'll have one word to describe it. Ten Hag won, but at what cost? <laughs> you know the co- you know I'm saying that because he approached the game the way Oli Mourinho would have approached the game, just Back to basics, defending, counter-attacking against a big a big team. That's not exactly Ten Hag's football, is it? But to be fair to them, they played well and got the win. And are both Liverpool now. <laughs> yeah, should Liverpool fans be worried? Because that's a poor start to the season. Yeah, I mean, nine. in terms of winning the league, normally teams who win the league don't have two points in nine games. So it's pretty... Hard, yeah. I mean, still early, but the signs aren't looking too good right now. But no. to be fair to them, they have had a lot of injuries. Like, if you look at their bench, the only attacking options there are kids. James Milner started in midfield for them, so yeah, it's not exactly a fully fit Liverpool now, but we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. see how they are l- later. Sure, the Premier I'll League is. My boy, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I was saying the Premier League is really shaping up to be interesting because Rodrigo is back, yeah. scoring top scorer, lots bro. of goals. <laughs> top scorer, just, just in time for a Qatar World Cup, man. <laughs> yeah, we we both know Enrique likes him, so it's not shocked me to see Rodrigo make it ahead of some other people. If, for example, I feel our football spots might be vacant if, depending on how he comes back from injury. So yeah. And um, Rodrigo can chill out with all the other Barcelona players that are going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he, he did he did some serious damage to Chelsea, who seemed to be in some sort of crisis too. Yeah, like the Chelsea crisis has started since preseason. You know, with the lack of signings. Thank you, Barcelona, for that. <laughs> the, uh, like just the amount of the lack of goals they have up front. And that's why they're linked with Aubameyang right now. And I think that's very close to happening. <sighs> I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm going to miss Aubameyang. He was really good for us. But yeah, Chelsea seems yeah. like they need him more than we do. And that, that's some real business from Barcelona. It's signing for free and to equip him for whatever year it might be, 27 million. That's some real business. Nah, I don't think it's 20. I think it will be 22 plus something. 22 plus five. Yeah. Yeah. 27 so. That's pretty good business. Also, from the pie, if I don't know if there's going to be a fee or not, that is kind of complicated there. Yeah, but, but Tickers was also also eye catching, like the three three uh, Trippier mm-hmm. from a La Liga boy. Or yeah, first boy would Trippier with a good free kick. free kick. Yeah, De Bruyne with a world class assist. Come again. I'm surprised Trippier never scored a free kick in Spain when he was here. He never really took them to. I think yeah. I, 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 I let him never score the freak that season. It's true. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and anyway, moving on to the Bundesliga, where Bayern demolished Bochum again, same result, 7 0. But the more interesting match was Borussia Dortmund versus Bremen, because guess what? So <laughs> yeah, the CVB, they were up 2 0. 88 minutes and they collapsed in classic DVB fashion, losing three to at the end. Like I saw some people complaining on Twitter. I was like, out of the top of my head, I was like, did BVB play? They're like, yes. I'm like, did they do it again? They're like, yep. (laughs) Dortmund, all of the goals came the last from 89 minutes and up. Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny, like Dortmund doing a Dortmund never gets old. That's all. Leverkusen, they're really struggling. They're really, really struggling. They have zero points. That's, yeah. that's, that's quite scary from them. Leipzig, too, they, they don't seem like they're in shape. And this 
This might mean it might be another season where Bayern wins this at a canter. Well, it's now you're admitting that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that, Dortmund made me believe, man. Like, if that had left. That does one make a lot of people yeah. believe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Halle situation is really unfortunate. And I hope he gets a lot better soon. And yeah, yeah. Dortmund, a Dortmund man. Just <laughs> accept, I, I accept, don't hope for the best. Just always expect the worst with these guys. <laughs> and yeah. maybe we won't be so disappointed when they do this. Yeah. Another league where we might call early will be League A. Uh. Uh. It seems like there was no crisis within Mbappe, Messi, yeah, they, Lamar, were... they all they all play their best. Like Messi assisting Mbappe within eight seconds of the game. Mbappe getting a hat trick so he's happy. Wow. Neymar gets a brace. Messi gets a goal. Yeah. All is well in Paris. Yeah, it seems okay let's look at Super Score. The top three players rated players on Super Score Neymar, Messi, Mbappe, top scorers, Neymar, Mbappe, Messi. Uh, I think I think they're all right. Yeah, yeah, they are. I think they're a good team. What's the difference between Gauthier and Pochettino? Because Pochettino wasn't getting the same level of performance. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I feel it's not really about the coaches. It's more about the fact that the likes of Messi and Neymar got a good preseason, and I feel that's what's paying dividends right now because last season the team was just getting. Like Neymar was injured at the start, Messi wasn't fully fit. It was just Mbappe, so I feel like it's easier for all of them to gel now than last season. I feel like that's the difference. As for the coaches, yeah. like, it's too early to compare them. Sure. Yeah, we we'll just hope that PSG do really well when they really matter, so they can finally beat the bubble allegations. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now let's move on to Serie where. It went last this week because it seems like it's still in the terrorism mode that La Liga had last season with four zero zeros in one weekend. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I was, I was looking at the scores and I'm like, I, is this Serie? This is not Serie I need two years ago or a year ago. <laughs> yeah, Serie like since 2015 or 16 has been like if you don't see seven goals on the match day, like what happened? Yeah, like seven goals in one by one team. I mean, yeah. yeah. But, but at least Napoli, they look like they got off to a good start. They won four zero against Monza, Inter. Yeah. They won three zero, and Lukaku and Lautaro they really combined well in this game. Yeah, Lukaku is back in his home where he should never should have left. And yeah, Napoli. The thing with Napoli is that out of the teams, four teams in top was like the one likely to drop out was them because they lost so many players, you know. But they've started really well. Osimhen is scoring goals and he's looking better with every game. Um, this new kid, I, I don't want to pronounce his name and make him and ruin it, but you know I'm talking yeah, about. The, jo- I, the, I Georgian, the, the Georgian George Best <laughs> is what I'm going to call yeah. him. I, I, I wouldn't attempt to pronounce his name either. Yeah. Like, I remember the first time I ever watched him. It was, a, I think, a little bit walk up for a fire Spain against Georgia last year in March. And this guy cooked Pedro Poru for breakfast. It was, he destroyed him. <laughs> and yeah, I, I looked at him and I'm like, if this guy gets to a top tier European club, this guy's going to become a problem. And yeah, it looks like Napoli is the right club for him now. So we'll see yeah. how far he can go. Yeah, we shall see. And that looks like a good point to end. So mm-hmm. thank you, everyone, who listened to us. Thanks again, Oscar, for doing no this. No problem. No problem. And see you all next week. And adios. Adios.